Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for checking out another video. Today we're having a look at this lithium iron phosphate TZ power battery. Uh, this is how you say it here, TZ, TZ, not 100% sure, but this is their smart battery they sent out to me. Um, this is a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate. It's got a couple features we're not used to seeing on a battery like this. So number one being the, uh, the built-in app. It's got a Bluetooth app. This battery actually has a DALI BMS. Um, I've looked at a couple other videos of teardowns of this battery and confirmed it does indeed have a DALI BMS in there. This is the DALI BMS app. So it's got a built-in shunt. Uh, I'm just gonna stick this up here so you can see it a little bit better. Um, yeah, it's got a built-in shunt. You can see the state of charge right here. We've got our voltage. Um, you can see the current in and out if you're charging or discharging. We've got all our cells right here. Lots of different features in the battery. We've got a uh, temperature sensor there. I'm guessing that's a MOSFET temperature sensor, but it always says 10 degrees, so I'm not sure if that one's actually working. Um, you can see the power leaving the battery or coming into the battery. And then we've got a couple other features here. This is um, all the settings for basically the discharge overcurrent. Uh, you can set up the temperature protection settings right here. You can set your uh, low temp protection, stuff like that. This also has built-in heating, uh, self-heating. So if this battery gets below your set temperature, which is five degrees Celsius on here, um, and you try to charge it, the, the battery will not let you charge and it will actually activate the heaters. The heaters won't come on just in standby while the battery is just sitting there. But if you try to charge it, it will not let you charge until it activates the heaters and it gets that sensor back up to uh, an appropriate temperature. So pretty cool features on this battery. Um, I've been playing around with it for about a week. It works just like any other 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate, but I'll do a couple tests on it here. Um, I'm gonna put it in my little mini fridge over here. This thing's actually broken. The thermostat is broken. So I've got it uh, bypassed just with a jumper. So it's essentially a freezer. Every, all the food we were keeping in here, uh, cans of pop, they were all freezing. So uh, it's basically a little mini freezer at this point. So we're gonna put the battery in there, get it nice and cold, and then try to charge it. And they did send me out this charger as well. Pretty standard 20 amp charger, but it was nice of them to send it out. I didn't have an AC charger before, just MPPTs. So um, that'll come in handy. We'll charge it after it's cold and see what happens. I will, uh, throw these on the battery quick here and just show you the shunt in action so that light will turn red we'll start charging and you can see it's putting in 20 amps into the battery I've charged it a few times and kept an eye on the temperature sensors everything stays pretty cool no big surprises um, but yeah I'll put a little bit of charge in this thing and then we'll get the fridge slash mini freezer cooled down and I'm gonna put this battery inside and uh, get it cold and try to charge it. Okay guys, I've had the Tizzy Power battery in the fridge for about four hours now. Uh, it's coming down to a little bit colder temperature. It's taken a while though. These batteries are pretty well insulated. So our main temp sensor is at 13 degrees Celsius. Um, the battery is ice cold on the outside, but obviously it's taken a little while to get into the actual sensor. So I am going to go to our settings here and our temp protection page. I'm gonna change our minimum temperature to 15 degrees Celsius. Password is one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so we've changed it now. So we should be able to put the charger on it and uh, it should lock us out. It should give us the low temp protection and activate the heaters and uh, prevent charging. So let's have a quick look. Here it is. Nice and cold. So leads are on. And it looks like we are locked out. So let's go back to the app here. We'll leave the charger on. I just want to see if we can find out if it says we're actually locked out. Okay guys, so I did just notice the charging MOSFET 
uh, slider has been disabled. So that happened automatically. That one was green before, but now it's turned gray. So I guess that's how you tell that it is temp protected. It is locked out. Uh, so we're going to have a look. It's been a few minutes. I'm going to see if the, uh, the heaters are active. I don't see anything in the app. So I'm going to take a quick peek with this uh, thermal camera. And it looks like they are. So we've got a nice hot spot in the middle of the battery there. Nothing down the sides, but you can tell the, the heaters are on for sure. That's pretty cool. That's a, a feature I've not got to play around with yet on one of these lithium batteries. So that's pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to let it run for a few more minutes here and we will see if that temp sensor starts to climb and then uh, we'll get it warm back up and do a bit of a discharge test. Okay, so it looks like as long as you leave the charger connected, the heaters do continue to run until it reaches that uh, minimum temperature. I did just notice this. I somehow didn't see that before, but it does let you know it's in a uh, low temp protection mode. So I'm going to let it warm up just gently here. It's uh, pretty frosty, as you can see. I don't want to cause condensation on the inside of the battery, so I'll let it warm up for a bit, um, fully charge it, and then we'll discharge it. I thought I would talk about the price for a minute. So. Uh, this battery goes for 359 USD um, to compare with like a Rodoto heated battery that goes for 349 USD. A Rodoto mini would be 329 and a standard Rodoto, just a 100 amp hour in this standard case is 269. So you are paying a little bit of a premium for the, uh, the smart feature and the heater, but I think it's a pretty good bang for the buck. Um, it's not too far off other heated batteries and you do have that built in shunt. Um, so overall pretty nice battery so far. Like I said, we'll get it, uh, charged fully and then we'll do a capacity test. Just make sure we are able to pull our full hundred amp hours and, uh, we'll get finished up. All right, guys, I let the battery warm up overnight. I have fully charged it. We are sitting at 100% and 13.4 volts. I've got this shunt hooked up as well. 13.47 sitting at 100%. So. We are going to power on the Renogy inverter and I'm going to hook up the same test we did last time. All my garage lights here, the fan, uh, I might add something else just to uh, get this test going a little quicker, but we'll do a discharge test here. Make sure we pull our full 100 amp hours of rated capacity and see how we do. All right, discharge test has begun. We are just down off of 100%, we're pulling 36 amps, 490 watts. Uh, I reset this shunt to 110 amp hours, just in case we pull beyond rated capacity, we can keep an eye on how much we actually pull because this does not read into a negative. So it would just go to zero and we'd have no idea how much we were pulling. Um, so yeah, I've got the, uh, the lights hooked up on this one and this is going to the mini fridge over here. So we'll let that run for a couple hours and check back in. All right guys, well we've been running the battery for a couple hours now. Um, this kind of turned into a torture test. I ended up running the heat gun for probably about a half an hour, pulling close to 99 amps the whole time. Uh, the inverter was running at about 1200 watts, which is over the rated capacity for probably, yeah, like 25 minutes, almost a half an hour. So they both did really well. Um, tiny bit of heat in the battery, just barely warm to the touch, but Everything's doing good, so I shut the heat gun off just for our last uh, couple percent here to try to keep the voltage up high enough that we don't get the low voltage alarm on the inverter. So we're going to let this run down. I have 12 amp hours left in the shunt because I did set it to 110 just so we can keep an eye. Um, getting pretty close, so we'll keep you posted. Okay, so we just hit 0% state of charge on the shunt, but we're still sitting at 12.5 volts. So. This thing is definitely going to go beyond the rated 100 amp hours of capacity. We still have 10.5 amp hours remaining. I just want to check the voltage. Yeah, we're still at 12.48. Uh, I hope 110 amp hours was enough. I hope we don't use more than that because that uh, we won't be able to measure it. So I guess we'll just keep running and I'll keep you posted. All right, heat gun's back on. This thing's gone below zero. We're still at 11.9. Eight amp hours of the 110 remaining. This thing's really going the distance. 
All right, we finally dropped below 12 volts. I have just the lights and the fans going again, pulling 450 watts. We're down to 3.7 amp hours remaining. So we've pulled over 105 amp hours so far, but I think we're getting pretty close. Okay, there we have it. The lights just turned off, fan turned off. Uh, it did come back on, but it keeps flickering in and out. I didn't get the low voltage alarm on the inverter, but I think that's gonna officially do it. So we pulled about 107 amp hours out of the Tizzy Power 100 amp hour battery. So that's pretty good. Um, nice little battery overall. So if you guys are interested in a 100 amp hour battery with some pretty good features, you know, you got the Bluetooth self heating, built in shunt, um, pretty nice little battery. Go check out the website. They got an actually really nice website. Uh, they have 5% off everything on the store right now. So check them out. And uh, once again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.